So now let us go on to heterotrophic nutrition. So let me again just define it for you. So it is an organism which derives its food or nutrients from another living organism and uh, it is because of the intake and digestion of organic substances. Normally it could be in the form of plants or it could be in the form of animals. So you have a mode of nutrition in the amoeba. So let us not directly go on to how humans digest because that is very complex. So the basic thing is the mode of nutrition in an amoeba and remember in heterotrophic there are three types of nutrition. So here I am talking about the holozoic nutrition. So what uh, takes place inside the amoeba? The amoeba ingests the food, once it is ingested digestion takes place and then you have assimilation and ejection. So let us see what exactly takes place in each of these steps. Now the amoeba does not really have hands to pick up the food like we do. So what exactly does the amoeba do? So when it comes in contact with a food particle, it sends out something called as pseudopodia. Pseudo means false and podia means something like your hands. So it sends it out and it slowly goes around the food particle. So this is called as ingestion. And when it completely surrounds the food particle, it forms a kind of a food vacuole. And inside this vacuole, this is called as a temporary stomach. So inside this, it secretes an enzyme for the digestion of this food particle to take place. So this is the process of digestion. Then the food vacuole will also serve as a temporary stomach, right? So once the digestion has taken place, the food gets diffused into the cytoplasm which forms the energy which is called as assimilation and you still have a certain amount of food which is not utilized. So this pseudopodia will open out and it ingests out whatever is not used. So those are the four steps, ingestion, digestion, assimilation and ejection. So this is in the form of a picture to make it easier for you to understand. So here you have the amoeba. That red thing there is the food particle. So when the amoeba senses the food particle, because it really can't see it, it sends out the pseudopodia, which surrounds the food particle, and then the food, the pseudopodia surrounds it completely, where it forms a food vacuole, which is a temporary stomach. It is secreting enzymes here, undergoing digestion. Once it is digested, it gets absorbed into the surrounding cytoplasm. So that is assimilation and once that has been done, whatever is not required, the pseudopodia opens out again and the other remaining food matter is sent out and that is ingestion. Simple enough. So four, five steps, ingestion, digestion, absorption, assimilation and ingestion. So this is how it looks when you put it under a microscope called as an electron microscope. Does not it look beautiful? Yes. So now coming to the human digestive system. So what exactly happens over here? We have, it is a complex system. We have several different organs which help in this process, the five steps which I told you about, ingestion, digestion, absorption, assimilation and ingestion. So this entire system is called as the alimentary canal. And it is also associated with a lot of glands which secrete a lot of enzymes which help in the digestion of food. So let us go into what are all these different organs which are present in the digestive system also called as the alimentary canal. So we start off here with the mouth and you have something called as a food pipe. You must have heard about that and that is called as the esophagus the esophagus. So that connects the mouth to the stomach. So the esophagus is the food pipe connecting the mouth to the stomach. So from the stomach you further go on to something called as the intestines. Now the intestines are further divided into the small intestine and the large intestine. So the small intestine is where the remaining digestion assimilation takes place and the large intestine is where the ejection takes place, ends with the rectum which comes out through another opening called as the anus. And to help us in the process of digestion, you have another two organs over here, the liver and slightly behind the stomach you have the pancreas. 
So, let us look at each organ individually, what happens in each of these organs. So, here you have the mouth and the mouth is also called as the oral cavity or the buccal cavity. So, the floor of the buccal cavity here you have is the tongue uh, in which you have several taste buds. So, you can uh, taste that is whether it is sweet, sour, bitter, salty. So, these are tiny pores which are present here which are called as the taste buds present on the uh, lower part of the mouth. Now, the man has also got teeth which you can see in the upper jaw as well as in the lower jaw and you have about 32 teeth that is if you have developed your wisdom teeth then it is called as then it is about 32 teeth. Okay. So, for you to remember the tongue has got taste buds you can see these tiny things here. So, that is why we put this Johnson bud over here taste buds to remember and it also has got glands in the mouth which secretes saliva. So, it has salivary glands present. So, now connecting from the mouth to the food pipe, remember the food pipe connects uh, from the mouth to the stomach, but between this food pipe and the mouth you have something else called as the pharynx. Now, the pharynx is a conical region which lies between the mouth and the food pipe, it is divided into two which is called as the oropharynx as well as the nasopharynx. So, when the food enters into the mouth it has you have it has to be uh, sure that it enters into the food pipe. Now, the nasopharynx is an opening which enters into the wind pipe that means you breathe through your nostrils and it goes into the wind pipe and if you eat food it should go into the other pipe which are running parallel to each other. So, this is the food pipe and this is the pharynx. Now, coming to the esophagus which is the food pipe as you can see it is a long narrow muscular tube okay, and that connects to the stomach and these muscles are usually something called as smooth muscles. It carries the food down and how does, you, uh, does it do that? You can see this over here, the food is over here. So, the food pipe has stretched out and here it is still narrow. So, every time the food enters and this entire thing is called as a bolus. So, every time the food enters here, the food pipe stretches out and behind that there will be a contraction that pushes the food down and that stretches out and then behind that there is another contraction. So, this entire contraction relaxation of the food pipe with the bolus going down is called as peristalsis or a peristaltic movement to push the food down the food pipe so it can enter into the stomach. So, now the stomach is what lies in just below the level of the diaphragm. The diaphragm is what divides the uh, abdominal cavity from the chest. So, it is present on the left side, okay. it is present on the left side, the liver is on the right side, the stomach is on the left side and partly digested food will enter into the stomach from the food pipe and between this food pipe and the stomach there is a small gateway over here which is called as a sphincter. Since this is the esophagus, it is called as the esophageal sphincter and from the stomach when it enters into the small intestine, there is another small gateway here which is called as pyloric sphincter. Pylorus means stomach. Okay. So, now this is, so you take the stomach and you cut it through to have a look at it. So, this we call as a cut section and you can see all these folds over here. So, these folds are called as the rugae and that helps in the digestion absorption of the food. So, from the stomach you have something called as the small intestine, the one of the largest organs of the body and the small intestine has a, a distance of almost about 20 feet. So, how does it fit into your entire abdominal cavity? Because it is thrown up into several folds, it is divided into three different parts and the proximal part to the stomach is called as the duodenum, after that it is called as the jejunum and then 
you have the last part which is the distal part and that is called as the ilium. So, this entire thing the inner surface especially the last part it is thrown up into several folds which are called as the villi and it is because and this is how the villi looks beautiful is not it. So, why does it have to be thrown up into so many tiny tiny folds inside because it needs because it helps and gives a larger surface area for the absorption of all the food which has been broken down and from there it goes to the rest of the body. Okay. So, what happens after the food we are saying the food is absorbed in the ileum. So, what happens afterwards why do we need the large intestine? Now, the large intestine is much more bigger as the name says and it is much more wider and you it starts off from one end where you have the cecum with the appendix and then you have the colon and then you have the last part which is the rectum. So, you have certain particles of food which are not required by the body which are excess. So, that food enters over here what happens here no digestion takes place, but water gets absorbed over here and whatever is not required becomes a solid mass and it comes out through the rectum and the anal opening as stools. So, now we have seen the entire digestive system. Now, how does the process of digestion of food takes place? So, you have certain glands which are present in the various parts of the digestive system or the alimentary canal. So, we are talking about the mouth over here. So, you have the salivary glands which is present here which secretes the salivary juice. Okay. So, salivary glands secretes the salivary juice. It also secretes some enzymes and here in the stomach you have the gastric juice which is secreted. Then you come to the intestines and that also secretes the intestinal juice. Now, I told you the stomach is present on the left side and on the right side you have the liver and right below the liver you have a small uh, gland here which is called as the gallbladder and the liver also secretes some juice called as the hepatic juice or the bile and just below the small intestine here you have the pancreas which also secretes pancreatic juice. Now, the intestine the last part of it helps in absorption of all this broken down food. Okay. Now, coming to the salivary glands in particular what are these glands? So, the salivary glands are present in the mouth and they secrete the first of the digestive juices which is the saliva. Okay. So, the saliva also contains an enzyme which is called as the salivary enzyme. So, next coming to the stomach you have the gastric glands and these secrete the gastric juice and this gastric juice contains hydrochloric acid. I am sure in chemistry you have heard about hydrochloric acid and it is a very potent acid. So, this is secreted by the stomach, but to protect the stomach wall from the effect of this acid, it also secretes something which is called as mucus or mucin. So, this protects and coats the line uh, the wall of the stomach, so it does not get eroded by the effect of the hydrochloric acid. So, why do you actually need hydrochloric acid? Because it, ha it has to act on the enzyme which is present in the stomach. Only in the presence of hydrochloric acid, this enzyme called as pepsin will get activated. Now, this is the liver and it is one of the largest glands which is present in man. It lies just below the diaphragm, but it is on the right side. Remember, the stomach also lies below the diaphragm, but it is on the left side. Okay. Now, the liver is divided into two lobes, you have the right lobe and you have the left lobe. Okay. So, the right lobe is larger than the left lobe. The cells of the liver will produce a juice which is called as the bile acid. Now, this bile acid is greenish in color and from the liver which contains ducts it enters into the gall bladder and from the gall bladder it enters into the small intestine. Okay. So, this is a beautiful view here let us con uh, consider this to be the diaphragm which is separating this uh, part of the digestive system from the chest. So, you have the stomach here which is present on the left side 
the liver on the right side. So, the liver is produced all this bile which goes and enters into the small gland over here which is called as the gallbladder and from there remember the bile is green in color that is why we have colored it green and from there it enters into the intestine. So, now coming to the pancreas. So, the pancreas is present between the loops of the small intestine that is the first part of the duodenum. It secretes pancreatic juice. Now, the pancreatic juice also contains enzymes and this is also poured into the duodenum. Okay. So, this outline you see here is the stomach and this is the duodenum. So, you have the pancreas here and that enters into the uh, duodenum. So, you have a duct in the pancreas which enters into the duodenum. Okay. So, pancreas is situated here, stomach, you have the liver and you have from the liver the duct which secreting the bile enters into this and then you have the pancreatic juice entering into the intestine. So, those are all the glands which are present which secretes the various juices which helps in the digestion of food. A little complex do not you think, but then we human beings are complex. So, again, so what happens nutrition in the human being? You have the alimentary canal or the digestive system and what are the parts? A quick re recap, you have the mouth and the pharynx which connects uh, between the mouth and the esophagus. Esophagus connects between the mouth and the stomach. Stomach goes into the small intestine, small intestine to the large intestine. Now, in the mouth you have the salivary gland which secretes saliva which is the juice and in the stomach you have the gastric gland secretes gastric juice. In the liver you have the secretion of bile juice and in the pancreas you have the pancreatic juice. Okay. So, these are the structures or the organs which are present and these are the various digestive glands and the juices which are secreted. Okay. Now, a little uh, note about dental caries. Now, caries I am sure all of you have got tooth pain and toothache and it is a kind of tooth decay which takes place because of the destruction of something called as enamel which surrounds our teeth and in the presence of acids it if the enamel is not there this layer is eroded away and whatever bacteria is present in the presence of food it acts upon this tooth and it causes a tooth decay if it is not treated. 